Hey, praise the Lord, everyone. Happy Resurrection Sunday. It's a beautiful day outside. It's beautiful to be alive. Uh, you know, guys, I knew yesterday was gloomy. You know, weather, cold, rainy, yada, yada. But nevertheless, today is a beautiful day. Windy, but nevertheless, a little cold. But nevertheless, it's a good day. It's a good day. It's Resurrection Sunday. You know, uh, in the Christian faith, uh, every, day, every Sunday is important. But, you know, there's two days out of the year that's really important to Christian faith. That is Christmas and Easter. You know, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that's what we are celebrating on today. All right, guys. I know it's been a while since I've been um, on the video and things like that, guys. I, I hope you guys still have faith in me and I hope you're not getting discouraged. But we, God is moving. God, we got things going on. Um, you know, I'm not even going to lie. School right now is, whoo. Papers after papers after papers after papers after papers after papers. Ah, uh, but nevertheless, God is good. All right. God is good. Um, thank you guys for your prayers and for your support. Um, with Isaiah, uh, some people knew, some people didn't. I didn't really put it out there and everything like that. But um, after a year, you guys know Isaiah tore his ACL about a year and a half ago. After all of that, he went back. He was God blessed them to get back on the field this year um, and start practicing. And one day in practice, they thought he messed up his other knee. So, man, it just went chaotic, calling me. Call. So we jumped there. We dropped everything, jumped, went to Charlotte, you know, check on him, you know. And so he's de devastated. I'm devastated. Coach staff devastated, you know. And you know, I just found myself just shutting down and asking God why. What is going on? What is the issue? What is the, you know, what is this? What, what, what is it, God? God, you know, and uh, I find myself, I'm not even going to lie, in a, pre, in a place of depression. Yeah, even, you know, my professors had to talk to me, give me some extra time, say, hey, take care of your son, you know, um, because I found myself in a place of uh, depression because I didn't understand, you know, and then uh, go through an MRI and everything, but nevertheless, God is good. Nothing major. No, nothing major. Nothing major. The boy is still practicing like ain't nothing. You know, um, God is got his MRI results back, a slight tear. They're going to figure out what they're going to do for it. We're going to talk to the doctors on Tuesday. Um, but we believe in God. No surgery. He is on his own, and he goes on to play and has an awesome career. You know, we just believe in God. You know, so thank you guys for your prayer. Thank you guys for your support in everything, um, you know, and what's going on in my life and in my family life. Just keep the Potts families in your prayer. And I know other days, Easter Sundays, you're spending time with your family. Everybody, the little kids got on the Easter dresses and doing the Easter egg hunts and doing everything like that. But I just wanted to do this video. And I, I really wanted to leave you with a word of encouragement, if I can. I wanted to leave you with a word of encouragement, you know, as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday today, I, I just want you to understand that no matter what seems dead in your life, no matter who tries to kill you, who tries to tear you down, who tries to put you down, just like Jesus the Christ rose, you can rise also in every situation. All right. And, and I'm going to talk personal. You know, today it is I'm not throwing shots at anybody. I'm just going to talk personal today. You know, um, it's kind of like with my situation. You know, I, I went through some horrible things. I went through some things that I, I didn't, I'm not even going to talk about. Some bad reports of this and that and this and that and that and this. And I found myself having to walk out of the pulpit for a little bit. And when I did that, people just berated my name, man. People, people, not, not people outside the church, people in the church, just berated my name, talked down. Some people ain't even talked to me. You know, uh, that's the worst thing since uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. You know, uh, it, it was crazy, but people didn't understand what I was dealing with. People didn't understand what was going on. People didn't understand the situation or where God was taking me. You know, and it's the same thing because I'm going to show you something in the word of God in a minute. And it's the same thing with you. People may not understand. People may not agree. People may not get it. But nevertheless, who are they to stop you from moving 
in the direction that God has for your life. Who's to say that they is, is, is what they think or how they think stops what God wants to, the next level that God wants to take you to. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, um, there was just some things that God wanted to pull out of me. There was just some things that God wanted to do with me. There's just some things that God wanted to take me through. And you got to understand something, man. Um, one day, I'll t one day, once God released it, I will be able to tell you some, man, we was fighting some major, 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 major battles. You know, not no sinful battles, not none of that. We just, we was in a very serious faith fight. You know, because God was trying to do something in our lives. God was trying to do something in the ministry. God was trying. And there comes times in your life. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. Where God, before something new can be uh, 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 resurrected, something old got to die. The problem is, is most Christians won't allow the old man to die. They won't allow the old man to die. You know, they won't allow God to do a new thing. They won't allow God to, to, to take them away from something and hide them over here. If you read the whole Bible, you find that God always took his man or woman and put them somewhere before he brought them back out. Want to prove it? He took Moses from Egypt to the wilderness for years. Moses was an old man when he went back to Egypt. Come on now, Moses. The, the, the historians say Moses it was in his eighties. He took Moses from Egypt and hid him in the wilderness for years. Look at Abraham. Get thee. He took Abraham from here and took him way over there. And I show you, every God, the apostles, wait, come follow me. Took him way out over here. God always would take somebody from their place. Of, of, how can I say it? From the place of, 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for, church? He, he, God will always take you from your place of, uh, of familiarity, if I can say it like that. A place where you're familiar with. A place that you understand. A place that you come, that's the word. A place that you're comfortable with. And he will take you from there and he'll put you somewhere to a place that you don't, you want, I'm uncomfortable here. I don't want to be here. I don't understand this. I don't understand that. But then, and once he does that, and God will bring you back from there. He'll bring you back somewhere else, guys. And we have to always, 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 always understand that. That God will always move like that. So people may not ever understand. The disciples didn't understand why Jesus had to go to the cross. The disciples didn't understand why Jesus had to be buried. And the disciples didn't understand why he had to go through all that. Come on, go with me to Mark. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. And we're going to say uh, 31. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Check this out. Check this out. And the Bible says, and he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders. Oh, be rejected of the elders. Oh, like, um, I got to take some time off for a little bit because God wants to move me somewhere and God wants to do something with me. He's saying, God even said, I got to be rejected of the elders. That's what he's saying. And of the chief priests and of the scribes. So stop right here. Let's look at this. Let's look at this 31 verse. He's telling them the church ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to do. That's what he's saying. The church and the people in the church are not going to like what I'm getting ready to do. And that's what he's saying here. He said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and of the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. That's what he's saying. Go to verse 32. And he spoke that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. Now, stop right here. The Bible says, Peter, who? Peter took Jesus and start rebuking Jesus. Gee, come on now. How are you going to rebuke God? That's what it says. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. For saying he got to go to the cross from saying, I got to step away from saying, 
I got to get, I, I, I got to go find a place and, and listen to God for saying, come on now, come on, that, that I'm, I'm gonna have to die. I'm gonna have to go to the cross because there's gonna be something better that comes out of this. The Bible said, Peter, you all know Peter, the Peter, his number one disciples, grab Jesus and rebuke him. See, the problem in the churches a lot is that we allow people to rebuke us off of what God told us to do. Come on now, if God is telling you to do something, you cannot allow people of the church to tell you not to do it, even though they don't agree with it. Who are you, Peter? To rebuke in a word from God. Who are you, Peter, to tell God or to tell somebody that God didn't really tell you to do that? That's just something. Who are you? Come on, stay with me. We still talk about Easter. But that's what he's saying. Listen, that's what he's saying right here. Peter rebuked him because Peter said, no, nah, you don't got to do all that. No, nah, you don't got to go there. No, nah, that's just you talking. No, nah, that's just, no, nah, that's what he's saying. But listen to the response from God. We're still talking about resurrection. Look, listen to the response from God. Okay, 33. And he had turned about and looked on his disciples so the Bible said he turned away from Peter and he looked on his disciples, Jesus said, and then he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me. Listen what he called Peter. He called Peter the devil. Oh, he called Peter the devil. He said, get thee from, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou servest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. He said, get thee behind me, Satan, because you speak as not, you speak the things, not the things of God, but you speak the things of man. Oh, here we go. That's what he's telling Peter. He said, Peter, get behind me. You talking man made. I'm talking God made. I'm talking that God wants me to get rid of some things. God want me to kill some things. God want me to bring some things under my suggestion. God want me to uh, 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 go through this. Because in me, I'm going through this. When he brings me out of this, it's going to be something powerful when I come out of this. See, beloved, we cannot allow... What we're going through or people or situations, we cannot allow that to take us away from what God is calling. And I know I'm, I'm talking to myself as well. We still have to continue to do what God has called us to do. We still got to continue to do what God has commissioned us to do. We still got to continue to do what God has placed on us to do. And understand, a lot of times it's not going to be easy. It's not easy. This walk with God is not easy. We're going to go through some things. We're going to go through some battles. There are going to be some crying moments. There are going to be some moments you say, God, why? There are going to be some moments that you don't understand. And it goes back to David. I have never seen the righteous for a second. Get it? I don't understand why God is taking B.O.G. this route. I don't understand why God is taking me this route. I don't understand, but I know it is my job to continue to walk the path. I'm going to go into another scripture in a minute. Because God wants to do something new inside of me. He wants to do something new inside of the ministry. He wants to do something new inside of you. Easter. See, we got to understand, guys. Easter, we celebrate Easter about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but he's not really talking about him. He's talking about us. Can we get out of the grave that people has placed us in? Can we get out of the grave that we have placed ourselves in? Come on, Pastor Potts. Can you get out of the grave that people have placed you in? Can you get out of the grave that you have placed yourself in? Can you get out of the grave that we have allowed the world to put us in? Easter is symbolic. It's a, it's a, it's a symbolic. It's symbolic of us. So God is showing us. Because remember now, he said, greater works shall you do. 
So God is showing us that if I can get out of what they did to me, you can get out of what they did to you. Easter is nothing more than symbolic of God saying, look at what happened over here. Yeah, you may not have went through it that way, the way I did, but there are some things in your life that you have went through. And just like me, they have rolled a stone in front of you, but I have given you power to roll a stone away. And I have given you power, I feel it, to come out of the tomb that they have placed you in. Guys, I'm telling you, you guys, I went through something horrific, man. I went through something horrific. And it was just boom, 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 boom. I went through something horrific. People wrote me up and they threw me in the tomb and they rolled, they threw me and they rolled a stone in front of me and said, there you go, we're done. But it was inside that dark tomb that I had to fight in my life, man. It was inside of that dark tomb that I literally. And I'm sorry, guys, if God didn't allow you to see my fight in public. Now I understand why I had to step away for a while. Because there was a fight that me and God had to have. And he didn't want it to be in public. You got it? And so, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm just talking to myself, man. I'm sorry if I'm offending anybody, but I don't know. This is the new me now. All right. This is the new me. This is new me. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to offend you with the word of God. It is what it is. You know, because in the church world today, we have to stop judging. In the church world today, we have to stop looking at other people's lives and making a judgment or making something uh, 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 out of people's lives that we know nothing about. We got to pray for people and not talk about people. We have to uh, reconcile them to back to Christ and not judge them. And seeing the problem in the church world today, we, we hide our stuff, but we try to judge others. Come on now, stay with me. But God has a way of rolling stones away. <laughs> You know, guys, yeah, man. But God showed me, you know, this is why I guess this Easter, all Easter's are, this is something, this Easter was different for me. Because I understand. Because I walked out of that tomb. I was able to get out of that grave. And, and the same thing is on you. You could do the exact same thing. You could do this. Go with me. Come on. Go with me to Matthew. We're going to go and meet your Matthew. Matthew chapter 28. I'm not going to read the whole scripture. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, Matthew, uh, you could go from, you could start from 27 uh, and you could go through 28. All right. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm going to read. Matthew 28, 19, and 20. I want to read those two if I can. And forgive me if you feel like I'm rambling. I'm going, no, 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 no. Or, oh, man, Pastor. No, no, I'm good. I'm just talking from my heart. I'm talking. I can only talk about what I've been through. I can't preach nobody else's life or nobody else's situation. I can only talk about what I've been through, and I can only preach my life and my situation. You, you, you get what I'm saying? So that's why I'm using my situations a lot. That's why I'm talking about my family a lot because I understand it and I have seen God work in this thing. So therefore I can talk to you from a place of faith and from a place of conviction because I had to walk through it. I had to go through it. I had to listen to it. I had to deal with it. I had to stay up. I had to pray. I had to pray my way back to the top of the mountain because I was in the valley, baby. I had to pray my way back to the top of the mountain. So that's why I'm coming at you like this, guys. And I'm telling you, just like Pastor Potts was able to come back, you can come back. What people say about you don't matter. 
how people see you now don't matter. You know, it, it don't matter. God had to show me that because for years I pastored people. Come, good God. For years I pastored, uh, I pastored uh, people. Um, how can I say it? God help me. For years I pastored with the fear of the people instead of the fear of God, if I, if I could say it that way. For years I pastored people who really didn't care about me like that. Yeah, I, I just say it like that. I could count on the hands the people that really did. And you'll find them out once God take you away. Come on now. You, you get what I'm saying? And God had to show me, man. God had to show me, son, it's in me. You missing it. You missing it. It's in me. 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 I got away from God and I start putting my eyes on the people. And see, guys, sometimes it's the same way with us sometimes. Sometimes we can forget that it's about pleasing God and not about pleasing people. Because you're not going to be able to please everybody. You're not going to be able to do everything for everybody. And you're not going to be able to make everybody smile. But are you making God smile? That's what matters. And Pastor Potts had to get back to that. I had to get back to the place of understanding. For God I live. And for God I die. And for God this is what matters. You, you get it? So yeah, God had to call Peter the, the devil. He had to say, Peter, get behind me, Satan. Why? Because God had to go back. I was he put on this earth for one purpose. Guys, I was put on everything that I did, the, the feeding of the 5,000, the healing of the blind man, this all of this stuff, nothing matters if I don't go to the cross. Because there is something bigger that my Lord wants to do with my life. But he cannot do it unless I die. Hmm. Oh God, I feel it. Hmm. Why? Because it was never about Jesus the Christ. It was always about us. It was always about us. Greater works shall you do? Jesus said, yeah, I fed the 5,000. I healed the blind man. You know, I did this. I pick up your bed and walk. The woman with the issue of blood. All of that. All the stuff that we preach about and all the stuff that we celebrate about is all good. But God was saying none of that even matters because greater works shall you do. But you can't do it unless I go to the cross. Well, what are you saying, Pastor Pastor? I am saying that God has greater things in store for us. There are greater works on your life. There are greater things that God wants to bring out of you. Come on now. There's prophetic words in your mouth, man. Some of you are called to lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. Some of you are called to win souls for Christ. Some of you are called to stand beside the pastors and lift up their hands. Some of you are called to help build the kingdom of God. But God is saying none of that will ever come if you don't learn to die. So I can resurrect the new you. Hmm. Brother God, greater works shall come out of this. Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Let's go, let's start with let's start with 16. I'm gonna read in six Matthew 28. 16 through 20. I'm going to read this. This is where we get the Great Commission. We would have never had the Great Commission if there was no death, if there was no burial, if there was no resurrection. We would have never had the Great Commission. So all the stuff that Jesus did before that was great. Praise the Lord. He was building faith. He was building people faith. He, he was letting them see. He was showing the disciples. You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He was showing the disciples this. He was showing the disciples that. But none of that mattered unless until we get to the Great Commission. That's what he was saying. He said, none of this matters if we don't have the Great Commission. Greater works 
Shall you do? It, come on, it reads 16. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Remember, Judas was gone, so it was only 11 now. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. When they saw him, they, but some said, I don't know. I saw what they did to him. Come on now. I saw what they did to him. I don't know. I'm just using my sound. I don't know. I saw Pastor Potts walk out the pulpit. I don't know. You know, he coming back. I don't know if he going to have the same anointing. I don't know if I'm going to be a part. I don't know. See, even with Jesus, even Jesus, his disciples, it says some doubted. But does that mean that God is still not a... Abel, does that mean that God, you are still not anointed? Does that mean that you are still not called? Does that mean that God still have placed all power on you? Verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And in earth. Now we understand because now we got to go back. Come on now. Go with me. You got to go back here a little bit. We got to go back. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Come on. It's all a simile. It's all. You get, you get what I'm saying? That's what he's saying. All, have, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And he's saying, the same thing that is given on me is the same thing that I'm putting on you. Let's go back to Acts. I just had to do a whole, Lord Jesus, Acts. I just had to do a whole thesis on the on Acts, man, Jesus. 28 chapters, each chapter. All right, guys, so we could go back to the book of Acts. He said, after that, after the Holy Ghost, and after that, power. And he goes on and says, all power. Verse 19 says, now he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations. This is where we get the Great Commission. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Are you following what's going on here? The Great Commission. For his name's sake. I'm, I'm, I'm finna close. I, I hope I encourage somebody today. I'm finna close. Did you catch it? I don't know. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Let's, let's go back. Did you let's go back? Oh God, I love it. Huh. I love it. Before the death and burial of resurrection. Jesus was the only one doing miracles. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus was the only one feeding 5,000. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus was the only one doing miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus was the only one doing the teaching. Jesus was the only one doing this. Jesus was the only one doing that. Jesus was the only one doing... You get it? But after the death, burial, and resurrection, come on now, yeah, uh -huh, he said, all power. Look at now. Now, it's all of us teaching, preaching, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Look at all the churches everywhere. Look at all the ministers. Look at all the elders. Look at all the people all over the world. He, he said right here, all nations. Back when Jesus was there, it was only in one. Now the gospel is everywhere. But the gospel never would have got everywhere if there wasn't a death, a burial, and a resurrection. I said all that. I went through this whole spiel. I went through all this to say this right here. The things that I went through. The things that you went through was never about us. It was about the next level of generation that God is going to have us to empower. Because in order 
for this gospel to go forth. Come on now. In order for something new to be birthed, something old has to die. The old pastor pots had to die. The old B.O.G. had to die. The old this and the old that had to die. Why? Because God was raising up something new. I am doing a new thing, said the Lord. Can you not see it? There's a new you that has been birthed. There's a new me that has been birthed. Let your old way die. Let your old man die. I know it hurts. I know you don't understand. I know you're walking around and you feel like this and you feel like that. I, I I was there. I'm still there a little bit. I'm not as bad as I was, but I'm still there. And, you know, the devil tell you the elders really didn't care about you. The church really didn't care about you. You know, they didn't really do nothing for you. They didn't really do this for you. The people in the world took better than you than the people in the church. So you get what I'm saying? So you got to understand, the devil will start throwing all this stuff in your head. You're not good enough. You're not called. You can't be used. You ain't this. You ain't that. You don't have a pedigree. You this. You that. You this. The devil start throwing you all this back there. And then check this out. Check this out. And then this is where you have to stop. And you have to say, get thee behind me. <laughs> you know, you understand what I'm saying? Because see, one thing I've noticed, one thing I've noticed, brother God, I got to go. One thing I've noticed, see, a lot of times, a lot of times, the devil comes in the form of people. Mm-hmm. The devil will come in the form of people. I don't know why he did that. I don't know why she did that. See, that's what we got to say. Get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because you're stopping me from going to the next level God has for me. God is birthing something new in you, B.O.G. God is birthing something new in each and every last one of you. Allow him to do it. There's a new you that he wants to birth out. The old, he's trying to kill the old. There's a new you he's trying to birth out. Let him birth it. Why? Because there's a great commission that's going to come out of you too. I love you. My prayer is, is that something that I said touched your heart. This is the new me, B.O.G. I love it. You know, God, God brought back that burning desire to teach his word to people. He brought back that burning desire to pastor. He brought back that burning desire to build. He brought back that burning desire to see him lifted up. One of my one of my goals is I just want to build churches. I really do. You know, just like people want to build houses and people want to build this. I just want to build churches, man. I just want to build churches all over the place. And I don't want to be no pastor of them. I just want to build them. Ministry houses. That's what I told y'all. You know, I'm coming back, but I'm 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 not really coming back as is I'm looking for ministry. I, I want to build ministry houses. I want to build places where people not only can get taught the word of God, but people can grow, man. People can be ministered to. The communities can be ministered to. Why? Because that is the great commission. Yeah, we build churches, you know, but that ain't the great commission. The Great Commission wasn't to build churches. The Great Commission was to, let's, let's do it again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you even unto the ends of the earth. That is the Great Commission. To teach Jesus and to allow him to minister to the hearts of men. That's what Pastor Pots is. That's where I'm at. That's where I want you to be. Every day you get up. How can I teach Jesus today? Every day you get up. How can I show the love of Christ today? Every day you get up. How can I worship God today? Every day you get up. God, what is the purpose for you waking me up this morning? Somebody didn't. But God, somebody didn't get up now. 
God, what is the purpose? Let me walk in the purpose you woke me up today. Because it sure wasn't to go spend 10 hours at no job. It sure wasn't to be arguing to people with people. It sure, no, you woke me up for a reason. And then allow me to find it and do it every day of my life. That's what it's all about, children. I love you. I thank God for you. Pray for me and I pray for you. As Paul would say, follow me as I follow Christ. Yeah. The work is not done. It's just beginning. This is just the beginning of something new and powerful. I'm putting the pieces together. God is putting the pieces together. I, I'm just, I, God is putting the pieces together. I'm just going to grab the pieces. As I am in prayer, he said, go talk to that person. I want that person to do this. See, what, what you guys don't see is I'm building a team behind the scene. I'm building a team behind the scene. I'm building a team behind. So when we bring it back, we're going to come back strong with a team. I'm following God's lead. You follow God's lead. And allow God to build you. Father, we thank you today for your resurrection power. We are thanking you today, God, for going to the cross. Because none of this would have ever, we wouldn't have got to this if you hadn't have been obedient to the Father. So I thank you today. And just like your word said, greater works shall we do and we shall have power. Father, Allow us to walk in that power. Allow us to do those great works. No matter what it looks like, no matter what people say, no matter who agree with it and who don't agree with it, allow us to walk in your footsteps and allow us to do what you have called us to do. Allow us to be do the Great Commission. It's not about building churches, God. It's not about look at this big thing. It's about, God, the Great Commission. Allow us to get back to the place of the Great Commission. Now, God, I, 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 I'm agreeing with everyone who's going to hear this and is going to agree with me, Father, for the place of ministry. Show us which building, God. We looked at a lot, but show us which building that is for us and the building that you want us to release and launch the ministry house in. And if it's the building, Father, that's been in my spirit that I keep seeing every time I go through that city, God, bring the destiny helpers who will help us sign the lease and get the keys. For that building will be a great ministry building for your kingdom in that city. Touch your children today. Greater work shall they do. I speak blessings and favor over their life. No matter the situation, Father, just like you brought me out, you can bring them out. Just like if you have, you pick me up, you can pick them up. Just like God, you able to, for me to walk out of my faith fight, they can walk out of that faith fight. So I thank you right now, Father, for everything, Father. I thank you right now, Father, for how you are blessed and how you're going to continue to bless. Continue to open doors in our lives and continue to open doors in their lives. We are thanking you right now for everything you've done and everything you're going to continue to do. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you, brother God. I love you. I know it was kind of long, but nevertheless, guys, I, I'm excited about the next level. I really am. I'm excited about the next level. There's so much I want to tell you, but I can't. I have to follow the lead of God. I have to keep my mouth shut and allow God to, uh, to allow God to finish because you will see it before I'm able to tell you. Let me put it like that. Some of y'all going to see it first. Then you're going to hear, hear from. Matter of fact, some of y'all going to see it and start shouting. You're going to get out your car and start shouting. And then you're going to call me and I ain't released it yet. You're going to see it. And you're going to say, look at God. As we go back to the saying that I said years ago, watch God work. Yeah. Just keep me, keep, keep me in your prayers. Keep us in your prayers, God. All right, God bless you. I love you. This is going to be a good week for you. This is going to be a very good week, man. Ooh, I feel blessings. It's going to, it's going to be a big week for you. This is going to be a big week for you. Believe it. Some prayers are going to get answered this week, man.
some prayers gonna get answered this week. All right, God bless you, beloved. I love you. I can't wait to see you again. Um, I'm I'm back now. I'm gonna be releasing. We got we got another Bible study thing I gotta release. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago before this thing with Isaiah and things like that, I was talking about, I'm going to get back to it. I got my notes. All right. God bless you. I love you. Go enjoy your beautiful families on this beautiful day. All right. Love you.